Hey there, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end all the way through so you can be part of the whole process. Uh, well, today we are doing something a little bit different. Uh, we just finished one of our blocks last night, so we kind of have a, a linger day before we start something new on, on Monday. Uh, so I thought it would be a good time to clean up around here. So I have an iron that's starting to get sticky. I got some stuff on it, so I'm gonna try and clean that, which I have never done before. Uh, I have a acrylic ruler that is broken that I'm gonna try to repair. Again, just watching some YouTube videos and seeing if I can figure that out. Uh, and then I am gonna also clean my sewing machine and switch the needles and uh, get all the fuzz out and oil it up. Uh, so those three things tonight, I uh, think that'll make us feel all good and fresh for, for um, next week. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Uh, we will start with the iron because that might need to soak. I'm not sure. We'll see. And then uh, we'll do the acrylic ruler and the cleaning the uh, sewing machine after that. So thanks for joining me. I hope all your guys' Friday is going okay. I'm going to flip you around. Okay, I cleared off my table. So here's what we got going on. I think uh, the acrylic ruler, I think to, to fix that, what I've seen is people using acrylic nail glue. So this is like if you have acrylic nails and it, they break, this is like, we'll fix that. <laughs> And apparently you can use it for acrylic rulers as well. So we're going to give that a try. But first, uh, here is my iron. And you can start to see I goobed it up even more um, uh, last night. I put it on some felt and it melted the felt. So that was dumb. <laughs> but you can see I got all this fuzz on here now. It's pretty annoying. So uh, it's a cold iron, obviously. Uh, I am going to attempt to do a vinegar baking soda paste just because it's what I had and it's what I had here at home and it was recommended in a few places so we're going to give that a try. Oh Bonnie, congrats, that's cool. All right. So here is some baking soda. This has been sitting in the fridge. I do not know how active this is, or I don't even know. I've never done this before. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm just putting a little bloop in there. And uh, I'm going to put vinegar in, which should make this whole bubble. And then we're going to make a, like, a little paste out of this. And it should be a little abrasive. And then that the um, vinegar should help clean it, I think. So let's stir this up. I'm skeptical of this just because of all that goop on there, but you know, we're giving it a go. So I just got a, a little towel here, just dipping it in there. And so supposedly on a cold iron, you can just scrub this on and it should start all the goop should start coming off. But I'm wondering if I need something a little bit more abrasive. So we're starting here. If this doesn't work, then I will, uh, I'll attempt some other stuff uh, in, the next, in the next few days here. I didn't really have a scrubby sponge either. Let me know what's happening with you guys, though. Yeah, so this is really goopy. So one thing that I did see if it's like kind of like a scratchy goop on here is you can soak it, like have a towel and uh, let this kind of mixture soak on there. 
like just sit and soak. So that might be something that we do. Like just put all this on here. Let's clean up the bottom. That doesn't look so bad. Let's see what's happening there. Oh, you use a dryer sheet with the hot iron, Don. I may have to try that. So we might come back, if this doesn't work, I might come back on Monday and test that out too. I wasn't sure if I had any dryer sheets and I thought I'd, I'd test some ideas one at a time, but oh, you know, I'm just kind of wiping on this little rusty looking spot and that seems to be coming off now. So maybe I just need to let it soak for a little. It's the felt blob. Can you see it? That straight line. <laughs> And you used, Robin uses a magic eraser. So I did see that tip online as well. I thought I'd try the kind of natural way to do it first, just some baking soda and vinegar. See if that would do the job. I might just let this soak. Ooh, it looks like rubbing is helping, but I might just let this soak while we try to do the acrylic and then come back. Okay, it is it is kind of coming off now. Oh, that makes me feel good. Okay. I think I am going to just plop some more of this on here and just let it sit for a little. There, yeah, I can see like right here, it's starting to come off. So it's just taking some elbow grease, but it is working. All, all the burnt stains that were there, those are all gone though. Um, so none of that's there. So it's just this tricky part with this, um, like I said, I, I, I put it on felt yesterday. So that was dumb. <laughs> I, I've been used to using wool felt and then, you know, you can totally press wool felt, but not so much the like plasticky kind of felt, the cheap felt. And eucalyptus oil. So I, I looked around, I did not have any of that. I was thinking I could try that, but we'll see. Oh, it's coming off now. You know what? I'm just gonna keep going. I think we, I think we got it here. Man, definitely not as quick as all those YouTube videos show though. But actually, like I said, all those brown stains are, are gone. Oh, it's totally working now. Yeah, it just needed to get in there a little bit. Iron's gonna be much happier now. I mean, I'm kind of getting it all clogged in the holes here, so uh, I may have to wipe it down a little after. You can see it was pink felt, so pink is coming off of off of the um, off of the iron here. So I may have to throw some water in here and kind of steam out the holes or get a little, uh... oh, I do have a little Q-tip. I could try and pick out the holes a little bit. Oh yeah, Barbara, I think that's a good idea. I think I'll try and do that. I'll, I'll try and steam it out a little bit. Maybe I'll try that this weekend. But it's, it's coming, so here, let me wipe it off. We'll take a look at where we're at. But yeah, I'm definitely getting it off. It's just, it's just some scrubbing, scrubbing involved. All right, well, I'm satisfied with this method. I mean, like I said, it's a little more elbow grease than I thought in a little more time, but I had kind of a tricky, tricky deal. Um, tricky kind of thing that happened with that felt. But those brown, the brown burn lines that I was getting, those came out right away. Another thing I've heard is um, to take just newspaper, again, something I didn't actually have here, uh, 
take newspaper and put some salt on it, and then with a, a warm iron, go over it with salt. And that was a suggestion if you had kind of a goopy situation like I do here, where it's just a little, a little uh, too much gunk stuck on it. But like I said, just, we're getting it. It's just taking a wee bit longer. I think we're almost there though. Yay! Oh, it feels, it feels good to do just this cleanup every once in a while, doesn't it? We're gonna get everything ready to go again. Oh, I still got some over here. Actually, there's little teeny bits of it in a few places. You can kind of just scratch it off though now. You don't want to scratch like with a tool or anything because you don't want to scratch the actual plate. Yeah, just a little right here. And then I did get a bunch of goop in all these, so yeah, I'll, I'll steam it out later. I think that'll do. Oh, so Kathy says, you say a mystery racer and a warm iron clean up like a breeze. Yeah, this is, like I said, taking, I thought I'd start at the most like kind of natural solution and we'd work our way up from that. But, um, so this is working. This is baking soda and vinegar, just like a little mixture of that. At first I wasn't really sure that was going to work. You know, sometimes with those just like super natural ways of doing it, you just kind of wonder, is that really going to work? But it is, it's just taking a little bit more. Let's wipe that off again. It's looking pretty shiny though. Much better. Much, 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 much better. All right, I'm going to call that pretty dang good. All right, let's um, see it just quickly. Got baking soda everywhere. I do have a little Q-tip that I could kind of dig some of these out, it looks like. Yep, that's doing it. There's just a little baking soda in all these. And I'm kind of actually pushing it down a little bit more, but, oh, these aren't holes, these are just divots. So I think, yeah, some steam will do the rest of the job for me. It's just baking soda too, so that can't really hurt it, I wouldn't think. I think we're looking pretty good. Actually, I'm pretty pleased. All right, let's do kind of a final wipe. Kind of seems like I should get a dab of water and do it. I don't know, not too shabby. I think I'm gonna call it. You know, just a little bits here and there, but that's not anything that's gonna slow my iron down or, or mess me up, I don't think. So, all right, there we go. That's looking awfully clean. I mean, you can see your, your reflection in it again. So, okay. Whew, first thing done, I like it. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Let's try this acrylic ruler thing. And I'm gonna use, use my towel later to set my sewing machine on. So, okay. Repair number two. So I got this slotted trimmers uh, a few weeks ago. Well, actually it's been a couple months now and I did not return it on time. So it came broken or when I was trying to get it out of the bag, it just broke while I was touching it. Um, so it, it had two pieces. So this is what it's supposed to look like. So I got this one, that one's fine. And this one, I don't even think I undid it from here yet. 
This is just for a size smaller. I think this glue is the problem. The glue is so strong that it just breaks as you take it off. So I'm gonna take the paper off first. So what my objective here is I'm gonna try and glue it together <laughs> along this line, which seems a little crazy to me, but when I Googled it, repairing an acrylic quilting ruler, there seemed to be a solution. So the solution was to get some nail glue. So an acrylic nail glue for acrylic nails. Ooh, yeah, this just stuck to the table here. And then with that nail glue, you can just put a line of it on your seam here and glue it down. So I'm pretty skeptical of this. But um, we're giving it a go. So let me know if you guys have ever done a repair like this before. I had never even, the thought hadn't even occurred to me really until, until this broke. Like I'm curious how it would stand up to a rotary cutter and all that. Okay. All right, so here we are. I just want to even see. All right, so, you know, it'll go right there. Luckily, we have a lot of printing on here, so I can line it up. I mean, you know, it's wanting to shift forward. So, I don't know. We'll give it a try. I figured I'll put the goop on and then just go right on the table like this and squish it together. Hopefully, it won't glue to the table, but I figured it'd be easiest to... Well, I'm worried about putting a cloth underneath because I feel like it would um, be difficult, more difficult to take it off of the cloth than just this table here. So I don't know, we're gonna give it a try. Okay, I'm gonna get down here. Let's open up this, this um, acrylic nail glue. What makes me a little nervous about this is that it's, uh, like a three second thing. Oh, wax paper. I could do that. Let's let's see what I have for wax paper. All right, I don't I don't think I have wax paper, but I have some parchment paper. Let's do that. Here, we'll we'll do some parchment paper. Oh, you glue your reading glasses together all the time. Oh no. There we go. Now I can just kind of slide it up together. Okay. I like this. All right, let's uh, open this thing. It's one of those horrible cases. So I'm just going to tear from the bottom here. It says, um, apply a tiny drop of glue on the split or crack nail and hold repair in place with manicure stick for three seconds. So that's, that's the scary part <laughs> is Hold for three seconds. So I have to get it along this whole line and put it on and get it in the exact right position within three seconds. That's, that scares me. <laughs> but you know, if worse comes to worse, oh well. I have the other ruler and that's my own fault for taking forever to return it. It's past the time to return it. All right. Oh my God, can I even open this? There we go. We'll do, we'll test, oh gosh, it reeks. We'll test making a little drop. This is one of those things, you know, I really should probably have gloves too. You don't wanna, okay, it, it just goes on like that. All right, you know, I think I'm gonna just, I wonder if I should just go along the line like directly like here. Now I should probably pick it up. Okay, let's do it, you guys. Yep, do not get it on the skin. Oh, I'm not wearing glasses, but let's do that. I'll at least put glasses on. I know, I just was thinking of that, that I, I'm not wearing gloves or anything, but at least I can hold it far away. So let's, let's just try and do that. Um, nope, I did not get this ruler from MassDrop. I just got it from Amazon. And there's a note in there to contact, if something was wrong, to contact, let's see, to contact the maker. And I tried contacting them, but I hadn't heard anything. So, um, so that didn't fly. All right, <laughs> I'm 
I'm nervous, but let's let's just do it. All right, I'm along the edge. Let's get it down. I'm gonna get right on top of it here, you guys. All right. Oops, sorry, I, I hit you guys and I'm just kind of moving it around so it... Wow, okay, it's holding. <laughs> It's magic! All right, I'm gonna just close this so I don't end up touching it. So it still feels kind of wet. Wow, it looks really in line though. I think a rotary cutter will go across that easily. Ha, 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 ha. Fascinating. Oh, you can't find what what these, where I got these, can't find what those and the other ruler you got. Oh, so this is the slotted, this is the clearly perfect slotted trimmers. Um, I usually have a link to it. I don't think I put any links on here today, but you can just Google the clearly slotted perfect, or the, the clearly perfect slotted trimmers. And I got the six and a half inch one. Holy moly, I think that totally freaking worked. What the heck? Look at that. So there is kind of, from where I squished it, I'm not going to touch it yet, and I can smell it, but there is like a little, you know, gob of goo at the top here. You probably can't see it, but just like right where it goes together. Um, the bottom's pretty flat because I moved it around, but it, it's sloppy, like I can see it, but it's flat, so dang, I think, I think this might work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, test it too much. Uh, I'm going to let it sit and we'll see. You know what? I'm going to not do anything with it. You know, in theory it says three seconds and it's good to go, but I'm going to let it just be overnight, I think. And then we'll come back on Monday. Oh gosh, you know, I really can't move it. I'm going to come back Monday to see. We'll, we'll give it a, we'll give it a try. Wow. I think it's really together really, really well. Huh? Huh, huh, huh. I think it is a win to Valerie. That is a little bit of magic here. I think that's a total win. And look, we got the we got the line um pretty pretty close here. So it is right, the cut is right here. Like you can hardly even tell. I don't want to touch it yet because it's freaking me out, but um yeah, I think I think it's a total win. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till Monday. So let's. I'm actually gonna just fold this so I have a clean, clean surface. Yeah, because look, that little little um glob that I put on first, it's still liquid, so it's definitely not perfectly dry or anything because I just squished it and it's coming out. So I'm gonna just let this sit, uh, and I'm gonna I don't know set this aside somewhere. But I think that's a win. I'm pretty impressed, honestly. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna just shimmy that aside. I don't think I have any other broken rulers, but I'm calling that a total win. So, Kathy, so this is just from Target. It is, so this is just, it's nothing special at all. It's from the, just the nail polish aisle. You could probably get it from, you know, Walgreens or CVS. It's where all the glue on nails are. Um, like the glue on acrylic nails and it's for, it's nail glue. So here we go. Nail glue and for nail, nail repair. Um, I got the one that said super strength on it. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That, that was a selling point, the, the verbiage on, on there. Um, but yeah, so it's just, just literal nail glue, like for fingernails, acrylic nails, not for fingernails, but like for like acrylic nails. So yeah. Uh, I think it was, I think it was less than $10 actually. <laughs> so I like it. All right. That's exciting me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to see if my mom has any broken rulers and uh, make sure to, that I bring that home next time. All right, you guys, next up, man, repairs are going tonight. I'm, I'm pleased. So next up, I want to oil and uh, just take care of my machine here a little bit. It's been a little while. Um, so it, it's just time, right? 
I think I'm going to start from the bottom up on it today because then I can get in and clean all the dust here. So I'm just taking off the thread. Oh, it's raining out, you guys. Can you hear the rain? Just a little bit. All right, and then my uh, towel that we used for the iron, I'm just going to set that down on, on my table here. Man, I'm impressed. That is, that was fun. When I read that, that that's what someone did, I'm like, okay, I get the logic behind that, but geez, that's some powerful stuff. Okay, let's see. I think actually, let's start, let's start by the bobbin. I know this is super fuzzy. Yeah, you can see all the goop in here. So we'll start in this contraption here. I have my, I have my little instructions here because I always, I always get nervous about putting some of this stuff back together. And this also has arrows on where to drop the oil, these little arrows. So I'm going to have that near me. This one, um, I have the instructions for this one, Kathy. So this one in theory does need to be oiled, but yeah, like my Juki that I don't use very much in the basement, that one doesn't, I just have to put oil in that, that vat, all right? Look how, look how does dusty it is. So we're going to wipe all that off. There's a ton of dust up in here. So that's, that's inside the bobbin area. I just move these levers. All right. So you, this is the part that, that moves when I turn the wheel. All right. This is original with my machine. I'm actually almost out of the oil for this. I think I did buy some more oil, but ugh, look at all this goop right away. I have a little cloth here to start getting this. I think uh, this is still some residual from when I did that fleece baby blanket. That clogged this up pretty quickly. But yeah, so I'm just getting any obvious fuzz out of here. You know, I was just at Joanne's. I should, I'm going to put this on my list, but I should get a pipe cleaner because that's always seems to be recommended by people getting a pipe cleaner and because uh, that you can get up in there and it'll grab, grab all the fuzz. I mean, this, this little guy works pretty well, but I can see that a, uh, yeah, grabbing stuff that a pipe cleaner would really do well. Ugh, it feels good to just reset though. I feel like I feel like we're getting all reset on this stuff. Cleaning up. Yeah, I think I might try and take the plate off too this time, Barbara, because I don't usually do that. Cause I have to find a like a tiny screwdriver for that. But there is an awful lot of fuzz here. I never, ever, ever used to do any of this really till we started the splendid sampler and and people would yell at me <laughs> for cleaning my machine or like how to clean the machine and I just never did it and so I found the instruction booklet um, some of this I'll be able to get when I open up the bottom I think some of this fuzz um, yeah so for now I, I'm not even gonna put I'm not gonna put these I'm not gonna oil these or put them back in yet I think until till the end but ugh, so much so much fuzz on these it's just falling off everywhere. But yeah, so now I do oil and clean myself. I used to just bring it to the sewing machine guy once a year, you know, if I was lucky or if I, you know, thought of it. But, you know, now I do it myself, which makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I know my machine a little bit more. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. Like, look at all this goop that's just coming out from in here. Okay, let's just, um, you know, this is weird. I, I don't know why I did the, I was going to oil the bottom first, but it feels out of order to me. So I'm going to tilt it back up and I'm going to try and get some more of that fuzz out of here. Then, oh geez, sorry. Ugh, then we'll, then we'll oil it still. So, all right, let's see if we can get that plate off. I think I need my skinnier. 
Oh no, this is the one. I have a I have a screwdriver nearby me here that I use for this. I have a little one and a big one. The little one oop, came with the machine. But for the bottom, I noticed I needed I needed a heftier one and this like here's the one that came with the machine. This one I might need to get in the back here. All right, yeah, so I'm just taking the plate off. I bet you there'll be a ton of fuzzles up here. There we go. And I, whenever I take a screw off, I kind of lay it uh, in my area in kind of the, the places where I took it off. So this was the lower left one and this was the upper right one. So I'm just gonna lay them like lower left, upper right. So I remember. Oh, the new computerized machines, you have to clean out the lint out real often. Oh, that's interesting. You take the bobbin case out and clean behind it. Oh. All right, here we're taking this guy off. There we go, like even underneath there's fuzz. So let's let's get some of that. Gosh, it's just everywhere. Okay, that's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So let's let's just scoop it all out on the top again. You know, even though we got a ton from underneath and tried to get up here, there's still, it's never ending. I think this is why I need a pipe cleaner. I, I need to get one and have it around. Because I could have picked up a lot of this in one whole go, I think. Oh, Kathy, that's about how it is here. I think it's kind of in the middle of that, like $70 or so to bring it in to, um, my sewing machine guy here. So I try, I mean like, which is what I was doing. And that's probably why I didn't do it too often, but I didn't oil or even clean. I, I didn't even do any of this stuff just cause I didn't know, you know, I just, that just didn't seem like a thing I could do. But then I'm like, that should be something. And it got the, got the instructions out. And I was always scared that I wouldn't be able to put it back together or something, you know? but this is going just fine. All right, and I think, I think I am going to leave the plate off till I'm done oiling too. I'm gonna to take the needle out. Uh, I know I'm gonna replace that, so let's just put that to the side, see if we can get any other fuzz up here. All right, now I think I'm ready to tilt it and, and oil. Oh gosh, there's still fuzz up here. Crazy, I wonder if any fuzz got it up here either. A little. Grr, so much. Oh, I suppose I could take the foot off too. Let's do that. Just to get any fuzz that might be hanging out. I suppose it's just gonna get all fuzzed again. All right, I'm calling it. Let's, uh, let's tilt this guy upside down. Oof. Super duper heavy. All right, so this is the part that I was always so scared to do but I think doing this bottom area, that's what's helped the most. So, all right, here's where, okay, these screws um, from the plate, I'm gonna just set them right on top of my, my uh, face plate there, my sewing plate, just so I don't get confused here. But there's a, I think there's five screws on the bottom. So I do actually need to, Maybe this is silly. Maybe I should have just brought it into the sewing machine guy because I do want him to look at, oh, and he still has our, our vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I will have to go pick that up tomorrow, but um, I wanted him to try and see if he could get my feed dogs down. So I'm still having that issue with the feed dogs. And I don't know if it needs to be like soaked in grease or something. I've never done that part, so I, or soaked in oil. I've heard, like I, I'm, I'm on a few Facebook groups for 
like vintage sewing machines and sometimes to clean them up they actually I don't know soak them in kerosene or something I don't know did any have any of you guys done that before and that really clears up the goop and then things can move around and stuff again I'm wondering if that's something I need to do with the parts that um, bring the the feed dogs down. This part takes the longest, the bottom. That's true, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe he will still, uh, you know, who knows if he was doing this anyway, cleaning it. I thought he was, but do you really know? I don't know. All right, last one. So I think they're all, there's only one long, yeah, these are all short and there's one, one long, uh, long one and that's the first one. Okay, this should just pop off now. Oh, let's flip this down. There we go. Some, oh, see there's still, still fuzz in there. So let's get the rest of this out. Ugh, yuck. All right, uh, I'm gonna just set this behind. The biggest thing I think we did here with the machine is switch the belt. That was something I hadn't done before. All right, now I can see underneath here a little bit more and still get more fuzz out of here. Crazy. Okay, so here's actually the part where the feed dogs, I'll get really close for you guys here where it looks like the feed feed dogs function. And what the feed dogs are, that's the, the um, grippers that pull the fabric forward, like on top here. Um, but if you put it down, that's what this does, my little lever here, then uh, they should lower, right? So I'm pulling, it looks like there's a little piston thing here. And if I lower the feed dogs with the button here, it looks like that piston goes all the way in and then this is free to move and come down, but, it doesn't move at all. So it's just like way stuck. So that's the part that I wonder if I have to, um, I don't know, soak or something? That's, uh, I'm gonna have to talk to, I am gonna have to bring this in. Maybe I will bring this in tomorrow and see what he has to say. Uh, because, Cause that's a bummer and it'd be nice to be able to lower it for free motion quilting and and that sort of thing so yeah you can see now that that should lower i should be able to lower it or, or it should just go down and it looks like it's free to do so but it is just full locked locked up like it should just stay down it shouldn't be moving so i don't know what the deal is I haven't figured that out. I've putzed around with this for a while and just still haven't figured it out. So I'm, it's time to just ask. <laughs> yeah, no. Time to just ask. So, all right, I am looking for this. I'm gonna just look. What I like about having the manual is, here's the top, but, okay, here's the bottom. It kind of shows me all the places to put a, a dab of oil. And typically what it what it appears like is just kind of all the parts that look like where metal will go against metal. So yeah, like so where where the feed dogs lower and stuff should get some oil. And you know, all these these bits here. And sometimes there's a little dot or like a little hole. Sometimes that is where you put the oil in and then the oil can just like drip to where it needs to be. So all right, this this brush um that came with the 70s sewing machine here came with like an oil reserve in there. I'm gonna have to fill it up again. Not quite sure how I'm gonna do that, but all right, let's 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 put our dabs of oil in the spots. Looks like down in here too, where metal goes against metal. Looks like up in here too a little bit. Sometimes I just move the wheel too to just see what's going against what. Like down in here, it looks like that's turning. That should get some. All right, over here is movement. So some goes there. I'm just looking for 
if there's one of those little holes to put it on, but it doesn't look like that. So let's just get it on there wherever something rubs against something else. All right, looking good. And then in this back area by the by the motor as well. There's some holes. So see right right here is an example of one of those holes. I mean that's just to screw in and stuff too, but or maybe it's not. It, it is just for the oil here. So that will drip down into there and get get this part here, I'm thinking. And I saw another one. Where'd that go? Oh, right here. All the moving parts. Okay, down here too, that's moving. Back here. And I think that's it to the bottom here. I think we're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna put the bottom back on, and this was the hardest part, I think, at least in my mind, doing, doing the bottom. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, put the bottom back on and then uh, do the side plate and then, then the, the top. And that should go a little bit easier. So, all right, cool, feeling good. It's always, um, I don't know, I think it always feels a little special uh, when, when I get this done. My machine just, Feels happy. Actually, it just feels like empowering that that you know, I'm the one who was able to open it up and and do it. You know, so that's kind of cool. All right, this is the long one. And I just keep this this screwdriver in my little work zone here. Because if I have to look for tools, then this is for sure not happening. All right, that's good. We'll do the bottom one here. Exactly, Gretchen. Huh, this doesn't probably feel on. We'll do up here. Yeah, so I gotta remember, I think I'll when we pick up our vacuum cleaner from the sewing machine guy, <laughs> it's the same guy, uh, the small motors guy, I think um, I'll see what they say about the feed dogs here. And mention that I just oiled it and everything too, so it's not like I leave it undone for forever and ever anymore. There's some other little screw areas, this, this part here, and there's another screw area here. That's if I put this in a table, then I think it gets screwed in onto those parts. But I've never done that with this machine, put it in a sewing table. All right, one more. There's still fuzz underneath here. I am impressed with that acrylic ruler. That just worked so easily with that acrylic nail glue. Fascinating. I was, I was excited about that. All right, let's flip this up. Then we'll oil and put the parts back in here and do the sides. Actually, I could probably wipe this down with that baking soda vinegar mix, but uh, maybe I shouldn't do that. All right, let's, let's put the insides in first. 
I haven't oiled this yet, so I still have to put the oil marks. So again, using my my uh, sewing machine instructions as a guide. So it's just, I need to know where to oil. So like right on the shuttle here, right a little dab there and where that shuttle like rubs against um, in here. So where, where this guy is moving, you can see it from the top, that, that guy, that gets some oil. You know, it's funny, it feels like it's a little tight right here. Like if I'm just turning it around right here, it's tight. So I wonder if that's dragging a little bit. Well, you know what? Maybe it is just time to bring this guy in and get, get a cleaned and done up for real. I don't think that really put oil on anything. That's where it said to put it though. Maybe I should put it right where the metal hits it. All right, good enough. And let's get this guy on. I'm supposed to get it right here. Yeah, the, my machine has definitely done a lot of sewing this past year and it will do a lot more yet. Oops, get that back in there. Never good at putting this back in. There we go, it fits right in. Okay, and then this guy, there's a little hole at the bottom that gets lined up, so that's easy enough. Pop it back in. There's a little bit of stuff that rubs against each other here. I'm gonna put a dab of oil there. But you can see, so at this point, you know, the feed dogs go up and down when I'm when I'm turning. So now they're all the way up. Now they're all the way down. And lowering this is supposed to keep them down. Like they're not supposed to keep moving up and down again, but they, but they are. So I don't know what the deal is. Time to bring it in for real. Let's close that up. Let's uh, throw the plate back on and then finish oiling this guy and, and be done. Now we're going, we're going a little bit long again here tonight. Still fuzz up in here. It'll be slightly defuzzed at least. Get my little little screwdriver out again. I think this is I think I may have one more face plate here. This is like the zigzag face plate because the opening's wide enough for that. But I think there's one that's just for straight stitches where it just has that little hole. I bet you if I used that, it wouldn't eat all my corners as much as this one does, like for triangles and stuff. But we're just going to leave it. All right, let's do the side. This just pops open, so I, I have to get that light bulb fixed too, so I'm gonna place an order for that. Well, actually, if I'm bringing this in, I'll ask what he has, but if he doesn't have anything, then I will um, place an order. So let's look at my picture again. There, here's here's all the points that we're gonna oil on the side here. It's This illustration is actually kind of difficult to know what the heck's going on, but... Again, if I just kind of err on the side where there's those little holes where oil goes in, and then also um, where it just parts move against each other, that I think will, will do it. 
Now it's a little dark here. It's dark for me too. I don't have the light. Oh, here, let's take the top off right away. There we go. That'll give me access a little bit more. There, now I can see all those holes. Ooh, that already kind of feels smoother. Yay! Love when that happens. All right, well, I think I think that's pretty much all I can do here, right? I think I got all these. I don't really want to over oil it either. Okay, let's do the top. And then we'll just close her up. Bring it in tomorrow. All right, I need my top picture. All right, I, I hit all those already, so now we're in here. So it's just where it all rubs up in a circle there, along this area, and then these guys here. There's a little reservoir. I just like getting it on all these parts that rub together. Probably overkill. You oiled your new featherweight and now it's purring now. Oh, that's awesome. How fun. All right, I think we're good. I don't think we need to do anything else. Um, yeah, next step I think is to finally bring it in and get those feed dogs looked at. So let's close her up, call it a day. At, at worst, it's all defuzzled. <laughs> and I, I like that. Okay, perfect. So that is it, you guys. We did the iron, the sewing machine, this acrylic ruler. Still pretty stoked about this. We'll let that sit. I don't want to. I don't want to disturb it. But um, yeah, that was impressive with that nail, the nail glue. And I, I want to peek at peek at the machine again here, or the iron. Oh, I got some on the outside. It's. I'm. I'm gonna have to take a wet rag. I think just with um, just water, and wipe this down too yet, just to get all the baking the baking soda off of there. But that worked. I'm impressed with that. Like literally just baking soda and vinegar and those it was kind of gooped on there. So that's, I don't know, it was success all the way around today, I think you guys. All right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, very happy with how that all went. Few experiments. <laughs> uh, I would like to try if my iron gets super gooped up again sometime. I try to avoid that, but you know, sometimes uh, stuff just happens. Uh, but next time, maybe I'll try a different technique because there was like the dryer sheet, the magic eraser, uh, the eucalyptus oil, like all, all those techniques would be uh, fun to try too. The salt on the newspaper, all of that. Um, but the vinegar and baking soda worked with some elbow grease and a little bit of uh, a little bit of time. <laughs> all right, so on, on Monday, uh, I think we might work on the um, the triangle tango quilt. Although now that I'm thinking about it, if I bring my sewing machine in, I may not have access to a sewing machine. So if that's the case, uh, we'll get a little creative. <laughs> so we'll see we'll see uh, what we end up doing. Um, I do have a pile of half square triangles to trim, and that might be a good test of this this um, ruler glue. So we could give that a go. So that's the plan. And uh, so that'll be on Monday. And uh, that's that then. I hope you guys have a great weekend. 
I feel good about all this stuff being clean and my table pretty much cleared uh, and we'll be good to go. So thanks again. I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. If you guys do give give um, the cleaning the iron or that acrylic nail glue a try, let me know how it goes. I'd love to love to hear your guys' experience on that. So awesome. Uh, I will see you guys on Monday then. Have a great weekend. Good night.